everybody, I'm Derek Spillin alongside Nigel Williams Goss, live here from the McDonald's All American Key Events. And you know, just fortunate to have you, you know, joining with us, man. I appreciate it. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the high school season at Finley Cup this past year? Oh uh, man, it's been going great. Uh, you know, right now we undefeated, we 34 and 0, and uh, currently ranked number one in the country. So uh, it's been a great year so far. But uh, we have three more games left. Hopefully, uh, we go into Washington D.C. for the National High School Invitational, um, where hopefully we can, you know, close out our season on top. Yeah, can you kind of talk about that? I mean, it's not really common for a lot of guys to go to like you know a prep school like that, a really high national ranked school like that. What's you know what's that season kind of like? Is it kind of like playing like a college year because you're playing against all these top recruits? Or? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, we travel like a college team. I mean, we we go all over the nation. Um, you know, and so I think it's definitely uh, going to help me and uh, really it has prepared me uh, for college. And uh, I think that's kind of the benefit when you go to a prep school like that. You know, you just uh, get that you know extra head start when you head into college. Just a couple more questions about the high school basketball kind of uh, AAU or high school. What do you feel kind of gave you a little bit more exposure to, you know? Um, I mean, for me, it was probably equal. You okay. know, just uh, just going to Finlay Prep, um, you know, is obviously just, you know, a national powerhouse and, you know, a school that a lot of people recognize as being one of the best schools in the country. Um, having multiple ESPN games on TV, um, you know, you really do get a lot of exposure. You know, having so many other great players on my team, they attract a lot of attention, you know, which also brings attention to yourself. I mean, as far as AAU, you know, it's all the best players in the country being in the same gym, same cities at one time, so that's going to bring a lot of attention as well. So, um, in my case, I think it's been a combination of both. Okay, definitely. And then as I was kind of telling you a little bit before, you know, you hit that big shot, man, live, live on national TV, you know, that three-pointer to uh, to win the game, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's a little bit back, but was that one of your highest basketball moments, or was there something up top on that? Or uh, No, no doubt. That was definitely uh, up there with uh, my greatest basketball moments okay. uh, to date. You know, uh, we were playing against Mount Verde, who was um, at the time ranked number one, right. and we were ranked number two, um, you know, at the Hoop Hall Classic, which is, you know, one of the biggest events in high school basketball. Um, you know, to perform on a stage like that, you know, with the whole nation watching on TV and stuff like that uh, was just a blessing and I couldn't be more thankful to God that you know he was with me through that whole game and you know really led me you know to do big things. Right and I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your high school year and now you know shifting gears a little bit McDonald's All-American man what, what does that mean to you? You know you, you're officially one of the few people that can actually say that they were McDonald's All-American what does that mean to you? Uh, it means everything uh, I've worked so hard for this it's been a goal of mine since I was about uh, in seventh grade and uh, I've worked my butt off uh, every single day uh, to reach you know to reach this point and uh, for this to come true is it, I mean, it's really unbelievable. Uh, a lot of people doubted me. A lot of people, you know, overlooked me. Um, so I really had to overcome a lot of adversity and prove a lot of people wrong. But uh, at the end of the day, when you when you get uh, this label, uh, no one can take that from you. Yeah, and then can you talk about, you know, you play with a chip on your shoulder. Like you said, you know, you're an underrated guard and you feel like, you know, a lot of people doubted you. And can you also talk about how you kind of overcame all that adversity and who kind of helped you on your path? Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, I definitely play with a chip on my shoulder. Uh, every time I step on the floor, uh, I feel like I got something to prove. You know, I just think uh, there's a lot of players, um, you know, who, who get a lot of attention and not to say that they shouldn't, uh, but I just feel like, you know, there's been times in my high school career where I have been overlooked. Um, so I've definitely used that to feel me uh, in my workouts every day, um, you know, when I, every time I step on the floor. Um, and, my, and my parents have just done a great job with me. Uh, never let me lose focus, never, you know, let me lose sight of my ultimate goal, um, you know, and they've pushed me every day and they've challenged me, uh, but I think, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it, it's been good so far. Definitely. Now, you know, just a little bit about yourself is, who do you try to model your game after a little bit? Would you say playing style-wise, you know, anybody in particular there? No, I mean, I, I don't really model myself after one player. I mean, there's so many great point guards uh, that's played this game. I think, you know, you can, you know, pick, you know, different aspects of, of those guys' games and try to add it to yourself, but, um, you know, I, I watch a lot of people like Andre Miller, uh, Deron Williams, uh, Chris Paul, um, you know, all those guys, Rondo. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with, with any of those guys uh, as far as, uh, you know, basketball-wise. And uh, just trying to, like you said, uh, pick pick those guys' games apart and try to, you know, add things to my game. And, Nigel, up to this point, who do you credit most for your basketball success and why? Uh, definitely my parents. You know, uh, my parents, my family, my grandma, my brother, uh, my nephew. Uh, all, all those people that, that that's really, like, that made up my circle. Um, I just never let me, uh, you know, lose, lose focus and lose sight, like I said, of my ultimate goal. And, uh, you know, they push me every day. My, my dad trains me every day on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, those guys, they, they do everything for me. They sacrifice. Uh, man, I, I can't even tell you how, how much they've sacrificed for me. Uh, so they, they definitely get all, all the credit, um, you know, for my basketball success. That's good. And, you know, recruiting process, obviously you committed to Washington. You're going to be a Husky in the, uh, in the fall. Can you talk about
about what that process was like and why you ultimately chose Washington. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a long process. Uh, it was a tough process. Got recruited by a lot of great schools. Um, but at the end of the day, I just felt most comfortable with uh, Coach Romar and, and the staff up there at UW. And uh, knowing their style of play, you know, it was a real up-tempo style. And I know Coach Romar was a point guard in the league. Um, so I know I can learn a lot from him. And um, and then uh, as far as my other schools, you know, it, it was great getting recruited by them. And uh, none of the schools that I was really getting recruited by or that I was considering would have been a bad choice. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just, you know, felt most comfortable with Washington. And for anybody who's never seen you play before, can you describe your game? You know, what what's your strengths and your weaknesses? And how have you used offseason to work on those weaknesses? Yeah, uh, no, definitely uh, the strength of my game would be, you know, uh, my basketball IQ, you know, just, just making winning plays and uh, smart plays, um, you know, and then I'm a vocal leader um, and a fierce competitor. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, as long as we win, you know, I'll worry about, you know, everything I didn't do right uh, after the game. Uh, but during the game, I just try to uh, fight and, and scratch and claw and do whatever I got to do to help my team. Team, uh, get a win and then uh, as far as my weaknesses you know I'm still trying to you know still develop my three-point shot and my, my, my mid-range game I don't think you can ever work enough on your jump shot um, and then getting ready for college just working on my strength you know I'm gonna be a freshman playing against guys 22 23 uh, you know that, that are men so just try to just try to get in the weight room and get as strong as possible um, you know so I can be as ready as possible when I step on campus and our last question for you man the most important question everybody wants to know what pumps you up before a game man? what, what music you listen to any particular artist uh, yeah no, I listen to a lot of uh, different people, but I listen to uh, French Montana a lot. Uh, I listen to a lot of French. Uh, I listen to Meek Mill, uh, Drake. Uh, you know, you know all, all the guys that I think everyone else listens to. All right, so you're at that here first, man. I'm Derek Spawn. I'm Sinatra Williams. We appreciate it. Man. No, I appreciate it. Right. Thank you.